This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. One time there was a young man at a dinner party, and he was trying to impress his friends with his background, his ancestry. He said, oh, yes, my family. He said, we can trace our ancestors back to a long way, to very distinguished, eminent. Well, he said, actually, I don't know who we trace back to, but I do know this. We have been descending for centuries. More important than where you came from is where you're going. Where are you going in your life? What is your reason for being here? What is your plan and purpose in being alive? 2,000 years ago, the Master said, Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. Ask and you will receive. One economic analyst was asked if business would be good this year. And he said, if I were to venture a forecast, I would say business will be good this year for those who make it good. So with life itself. It will be what you choose to make it. The decision is yours. You face decisions every day to accommodate its customers who needed change for parking meters. A bank in Virginia once put a big glass bowl holding $5 in small coins out in the lobby of the bank. The customers were invited to make their change for themselves with the parking meters. Some of the bank officials thought it was a foolish idea. But far from being short at the end of the year, the bowl showed a profit of 69 cents. The Spirit of God appeals to the best in you. Appeal to the best in other people, and you will bring it forth. It is written, do to others as you would have them do to you. Love your neighbor as yourself. One philosopher wrote, I looked upon my brother with the microscope of criticism, and I said, how coarse my brother is. I looked at him with the telescope of scorn, and I said, how small my brother is. But then I looked in the mirror of truth, and I said, how like me my brother is. Love, in spite of failings and frailties and follies and foolishness, love people. You are here on this earth to learn to love. The two great commandments are the love of God and the love of others. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. In love there is joy, and you are on this earth and in this universe to learn to love, to forgive, to reconcile, to be at peace with people, to do good to people, to bring compassion and mercy and fairness and consideration into life on this earth. That's why you're here, and that is the truth. Listen to these words. These words by the explorer Dr. Edward Wilson, who died in the year 1912. Now, Wilson went with Scott on his last expedition to the Antarctic as a doctor and zoologist. He endured the terrible winter journey with Bowers and Cherry Garrard when they went in search of emperor penguin eggs. And he was one of the five who reached the South Pole in January of 1912. These are words he wrote in his diary. The more we try, the clearer becomes our insight. And the more we use our thinking faculties, the quicker they become in their power of grasping points of truth. Truths, he wrote, are not things we can pick up without taking trouble to hunt for them. And when we find a truth, we really possess it because it is bound to our heart by the process by which we reached it. Through trouble, difficulty, or sorrow, a man binds it into his life. But what is easily come by is easily lost. Every bit of truth that comes into a man's heart burns in him and forces its way out, either in his actions or in his words. Truth is like a lighted lamp in that it cannot be hidden away in the darkness because it carries its own light. Dare to quest for truth. Dare to seek for it with all your heart and soul. The Master declared, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And again he said, Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. Ask and you shall receive. There are seven supreme spiritual truths in this universe. These are truths capable of the total transformation of your human life and the way you live it, your relationship with others, life on this planet, and this very universe itself. First, the sovereign existence and fatherhood of God. It is written, for one is your father, said Jesus, for one is your father which is in heaven. Second, the spiritual brotherhood of man and of all people, cosmic consciousness of membership in a universal family of love, the family of God, said Jesus, you are all brothers. Third, the kingdom of God is within you. Within you. A fragment of infinity indwells your mortal mind. A spark of spirit, something of God's reality and essence is in your mind this very moment, responding as you hear the words of this broadcast wherever you are on this planet. Or if you're an astronaut or a cosmonaut, 
in orbit someplace or in outer space, wherever you are hearing this broadcast, something within you responds and recognizes the truth of these words because there's something spiritual inside you. You have a soul, indeed you are a soul, and you have a body. The kingdom of God is within you. The fourth great truth, the daily decision to do the will of God is the greatest possible good for your life, for this world, for this universe. Said Jesus, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And he taught to pray, thy kingdom come, your will be done, asking for the will and purpose of God to prevail in life. Fifth, eternal life is yours simply for the choosing, for the faith to choose it. Progression day by day, age by age, through this universe of universes. Sixth, maintain absolute loyalty to supreme values, truth, beauty, goodness, and live in love. Hunger and thirst after righteousness, said Jesus. Blessed are you, or happy are you, when you hunger and thirst after righteousness, goodness, for you will be filled. And number seven, progression toward perfection is the purpose of mortal existence, said Jesus. Be you perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. You are here for a purpose. You're not just some blind, unforeseen accident. You may say, well, my parents didn't even plan to have me. He said, when I was born, I wasn't a little bundle from heaven. I was more a little, little bungle from heaven. They didn't plan on me, and here I showed up, and I've never felt that I was worth very much. God has a purpose for your life. God, in the mind of God, all things exist. God knows everything. God knows everything. He is omniscient, meaning all-knowing, omnipotent, all-powerful, omnipresent, everywhere. And this great God loves you. God knows you. God has known every second and millisecond, every minute and hour and day and week and month and year of your life right to this present moment. And God has loved you every moment of it. Whatever you've done wrong, God has forgiveness and newness of life, restoration for you if you will seek it and find it and claim it in faith. This God, who is the architect of time and space, knows who you are and loves you and cares about you. The very God who is the first source and center of all things and beings, who is the creator and the controller and the infinite upholder of all reality, all that is, all that exists, loves you. The stability of all statics, the dynamism of all change, the very one who conceived it all and brought it all to be, this God loves you, has mercy, newness, restoration, new life for you, if only in faith you will claim it. This is truth. It's a truth which can transform your life. God loves you. Some people say, well, it sounds too good to be true, which would imply the more good something is, the less true it must be, and the more true something is, the worse it would have to sound. But the truth is the love of God is both true and it is good. If you believe you are worthless, if that's the opinion you hold of yourself, that will become a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you believe you're worthless, you'll begin to feel that way and act that way and behave that way in your life and toward other people. But if in faith you'll believe yourself as the master taught to be a child of God, a son or daughter of divinity, you'll begin to live that way by eternal values and eternal life will have begun for you. Bear this uppermost in your mind. God loves you. Never forget this. Always remember, God loves you. Back in the 1800s, there was a man from Glasgow, Scotland, who was sitting on a coach beside the driver on a lonely highland road. He saw in the distance an old woman who looked wistfully toward this horse coach as it came along the path. As it came near, her face showed in turn anxiety, hope, and fear, and longing. And as the coach passed, the driver, with downcast eyes and with a sad expression on his face, shook his head back and forth. The old woman's countenance fell. She turned and went disappointed into her cottage. The man who was riding beside the driver was affected by what he saw, and he asked for an explanation. The driver said, for several years, that woman every day would watch for that horse coach, expecting either to see her son or perhaps to receive a letter from him. This son had gone into one of the great cities of Europe and had forgotten to contact his mother, forgotten all about her, apparently. This mother who loved him so dearly, but that mother went out every day onto the road to meet the coach, hoping yearning, longing that one day her son would return to her or at least make contact with her. That is how God loves you. God loves you. God goes out searching for you. God cares about you. Give your life to God this moment, and you at last will find yourself because you at last will have found your God. Write to us, will you? 
at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell that mailing address, Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Denham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.